Find the point at which the line f of x is equal to negative 2x minus 1 intersects the line g of x equals negative x. All right. So if this problem is thoroughly confusing to you, it is to me as well. There's a lot of things going on, right? We got these functions, f of x, g of x. What the heck does that even mean? Um, let's simply color code these two formulas and we're going to rewrite them. Okay. So let's put this one in red. So instead of remember writing f of x, just that just means a function of x, you can call this whatever you like. You can call it y, you can call it a, b, c, d, it doesn't matter. All right, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to call it y. So if I call that y, then that's simply going to be equal to negative 2x minus 1. Now doesn't this look a little more familiar, right? This looks like a linear equation, right? It follows the form y is equal to mx plus b. So... Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now rewrite my second equation. I'm just going to put it in blue. So recall then this says g of x, but I can call it whatever I like. All right. So instead, what I'm going to do is call it y again. So I'm going to call that y is equal to, apologize for the dog barking in the background, but it's the time of the day when the mailman comes. So y is equal to then negative x. All right. So now that we, <laughs> so now we have these two equations. Let me put that on the side. Okay. You would think by now seeing someone every day you'd become familiar with them, but uh, yeah, doesn't seem to happen with dogs. Any case, so what I now realize is that these are two equations that basically follow um, linear lines, right? This also has the form of y equals mx plus b. You might say, well, that looks a little strange. Well, if the slope were to be 1 and the y-intercept was 0, what would that simplify down to? Well, actually, technically, it would be negative 1, right? The slope. What would that simplify down to? Well, it would simplify down to this, okay? Now, let's just get rid of all that. So, let's now create a simple visual, okay? I'm not going to be very accurate because I don't have graph paper here, but I'm going to create a very simple visual of what these two lines look like, okay? So, let's. here's our axis. I'm going to do a very rough job here. So the y-intercept here is going to be negative 1. So we would go down to negative 1 here on the graph and plot that y-intercept. We now know the slope is negative 2, right? Remember, this is the same thing as saying negative 2 over 1. And remember, it's always the change in y over the change in x. So since the change in x here is essentially then positive, we can think of that as positive, we would move over one spot on the x-axis. And then the change in y was now negative 2. So we'd have to go down, right? You have to go down two points or two spots and we would plot that particular point right about here okay and this now line approximates roughly well let's try to get a little straighter okay so that line now approximates the red equation okay so let's see what happens when i now plot the uh blue one roughly what's the y-intercept well again it's like saying plus zero right so zero is the y-intercept so let's plot that here and now it says that the slope here is going to be a negative 1, basically, right? So remember, I can simply rewrite this as then saying negative 1x. That's legal, right? You're not going to get arrested for that. And then this is going to be a positive 1 on the bottom. Why is it positive? Well, if it's negative, then this is a double negative, and that makes it positive, and that just isn't true. So we have to leave it like that. So we can go out then. Remember, change in, change in y over change in x. So I'm going to go right x. You can do either one first, it doesn't matter. But I think of x first, so it's positive one, and then I gotta go down one. Okay? So maybe that's maybe that's about here or something. Okay? And then what's the next point? Well again we would have to go down, so maybe that's about here. Now this is not really to scale. So I gotta do a little better job here. Alright? So maybe it's something like this. Ish. Okay, so now let's connect those right those points all right so that that roughly approximates it right and now we realize these two graphs will cross where they're going to cross right around here ish okay now what's the significance of the point at which they intersect we well, have to think about this right every single point on a line you can call it the red line every single point on that red line as a series of coordinates to it, right? An X and a Y. Similarly, every single point on the blue line also has a series of coordinates to it. 
And what do we realize about this coordinate right here? This coordinate right here is the same for both lines. That's the significance of the intersection. Okay, so let me get rid of all the dots. Oh, went way too far. Oh, thank God for redo. So here, this particular point is the point at which they have in common. Okay, this point in common amongst both lines. So what does that mean? Well, I imagine, for example, I don't know what the point is yet, but imagine it's negative one comma positive one or something. Okay. So that means that negative one comma positive one, if this were the point, what that means is I can take this, this X and this Y, plug it in for both equations for X and Y, and they would be the same. They would be true statements. Okay. Meaning that if Y were, you know, one here and I plugged in a negative one here, then indeed this side should work out to be one. All right. It actually might turn out to be that value, but let's see what happens. Okay. So now, but let's say you don't know, let's say you didn't draw this out and you have an idea of where it might lie. How do you still figure this out? So let's go back to the basic equations again. Let me just erase that part and I'm going to box in the equations I'm talking about. This one and this one. Okay. Remember, whatever the y is here is the same as the y then here where they intersect. Similarly, the x here is going to be the same as the x here wherever they intersect. Right? So think about that for a second. If this y where they intersect is the same as this y, then if this is the same as this, then this part of the equation must be the same as that. Does that make sense? Right? It's like a little logic. So what that means, if, if the red y at that particular point of intersection has to equal the blue y, the coordinate that is, right? Remember, I'm talking about the coordinate, the y coordinate of that point. Then I can state that the rest of the red equation, negative 2x minus 1, is then going to be, let me make that a little neater, is then going to be equal to the other part of the blue equation, negative x. Wait a second. I love this. Why? Because now I have an equation I can solve for an unknown. Now I know once I set up this then equation and I solve this for x, I know then I can find x. Right? So how do we do this? Well, let's just rewrite it again all in black. So we got to isolate x on one of the sides. So why don't we take this and add it on over to the right hand side. So add the 2x, add the 2x. This is now negative 1 is going to be equal to what's positive 2x minus x? Well, it's simply just 1x or aka x. And wait a second, this is, right? This is what I estimated it to be roughly. It just so, I honestly just worked out to be, if only you can be that lucky on an exam, right? So um, it just turned out to work out that way. I knew it was going to be a negative x. I just didn't know it was going to be negative 1, you know? But, you know, <laughs> I don't want to brag. Uh <laughs> Just kidding. It's a joke. So here we go. So now we know what x is, right? So we know the x coordinate of this point. It's going to be negative 1. Then the question becomes, well, what the heck is y going to be? And again, what I'm now going to do is take this and plug it on in, meaning take the x value that I know to be true here and plug it into either equation. Plug it in as x for either equation, and we're going to realize that y will work out to be identically the same. It does not matter which one you plug it into. So, which one's easier? Well, I think this one's a lot easier to work with. So, y is equal to negative x. We said that x is going to be equal to negative 1. Just be careful about the double negative. And then what do we realize y is equal to? y is equal to 1. OM genus. Right? There we go. And that's kind of what it looks like it should be, right? And that hopefully all makes sense. So find the point at which the graphs intersect. Oh, there it is. That's the point right here. Negative one, comma one. Cool. Now let's go through the second example, but this one we're going to fly through. I believe I can fly. Enough of that. Find the point 
at which the line f of x equals 2x plus 5 intersects the line g of x is equal to negative 3x minus 5. So again, if you want, just rewrite these equations with y in it. It makes it nice, right? You might say, well, wait a minute. You know, Andrew, this says f of x and this says g of x. So how did you know to make them both y? Right? They don't look the same to me here. Well, remember that basically whenever you have a function of x, this is saying f is a function of x. This is saying g is a function of x. But if they're both functions then of the same thing, essentially, they basically will be at a point equal to one another. Okay? So that's kind of the, hope, hopefully that kind of makes sense. But you can basically call anything, anytime you have f of x, g of x, h of x, whatever, just call it y. Anyway, let's do this one in red. So we're going to have y is equal to 2x plus 5. Let's do this one in blue. So this one's going to be y is going to equal negative 3x minus 5. And now what did we say? When the points, when the lines intersect, they have a point that is in common. That means whatever the y is here will equal the y here. Whatever the x is here will equal the x over there. So what's easiest is because these equations are both solved for y already, it's much easier to just say that the red y at some point will equal the blue y at some point. It's exactly identical to this picture. I'm just not going to draw it out this time because we, you know, we have the visual over here. If you like, try it, try it out. Draw out the two lines, get an idea for where they're going to intersect. But that's also the beauty of algebra, that sometimes we don't really need, I mean, it's very good to visualize, but sometimes we don't need to visualize the problem if we can understand the concept behind it. All right, it might make it go faster, but I do think visualization is key. Anyway, enough of the, enough of the, <laughs> Enough of the uh, professing here. So 2x plus 5. That's going to then equal the y. So which was negative 3x minus 5, right? Same ideas as before. So now all we got to do is solve this for x. So why don't we simply maybe add the 3x on over to the left. At the same time, I know I got to isolate x on one side. So I'm going to bring the 5 on over to the other side. So minus 5 there, minus 5 there. So that cancels, that cancels. What are we left with? This works out to be positive 5x on the left. That works out to be negative 10 on the right. Divide both sides by 5, and we realize now x is going to equal negative 2. Now, remember, if x is equal to negative 2, that's the x value of both equations at the point of intersection, what now can I, how can I now find the y value? So I'm just going to move this on over, okay? Remember, you can take this x value and plug it into either equation you like. It doesn't matter. Whichever one you choose. Okay? So why don't we do it into this equation? So we're going to have y is equal to negative 3x minus 5. And test it for yourself. Also put it in there and see if it works out the same. Uh, so now we're going to have y is equal to negative 3 multiplied by negative 2 minus 5. So y is then going to be equal to negative 6 minus 5 y is then equal to negative 11. And lo and behold, what are the coordinates then? Well, we have our x of negative 2, and we have our y of negative 11. Voila. Guys, thank you so very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please remember to help us out and subscribe. Tell your friends. If we were able to help you, we might be able to help them as well. And we look forward to helping you with more problems. Be well.